Hi, everyone. Sina here from 21st Capital. I'm a business professor and a Bitcoin analyst and consultant. And uh, I thought I would uh, begin recording a series of videos to share the results of my research and data-driven insights from uh, years of studying business and uh, economics and Bitcoin. So with that, let's get into it. Let me share some uh, slides with you. All right, so what I want to talk about today is an index that we've recently developed, which is the Volatility Adjusted Power Law Index. Our research is being published on Bitcoin Insights. You can find it at research.bitcoininsights.io, and you can find all of our articles there, which are uh, based on uh, deep research in, in Bitcoin market, uh, and typically uh, based on uh, insights from the data. Okay, so let's see. Uh, what is a problem that we are trying to address? Uh, the problem is we have a lot of uh, Bitcoin uh, indicators and, and data points, but converting them into a decision-making tool um, is typically difficult, especially building things like oscillators have... Uh, proven to be uh, complicated because Bitcoin is an evolving asset and from cycle to cycle, its behavior changes. Here's an example. Uh, I've been looking at MVRV as a wonderful tool to measure uh, how much uh, uh, enthusiasm there is in the market and how much the price has deviated from the real amount of dollars that have entered the market. Um, however, you at any point in time, uh, there's there is no way you can tell uh, which numbers indicate approximate peak. Uh, the reason for that is in one of the, in uh, cycle one, the metric has gone as high as seven, and in previous cycle, it peaked at just below four, uh, and it has consistently decayed over time. Why does this happen? because the nature of the market changes over time and the previously established boundaries and thresholds do not apply to future cycles. So uh, this way we can't build an oscillator or, or, an, or a reliable index because we never know what would be the maximum and the peak of the next cycle. So, but the bottoms are pretty good, reliable. Um, so how can we fix this problem? And this is known as a normalization problem. Um, and uh, I'll explain how I have addressed it. I begin with the power law model. Uh, you might have heard about this from uh, our Twitter discussions. Uh, this is a great model with wonderful fit to the data that explains how Bitcoin price grows uh, with time. This is a log log model. It has a uh, 95 percent r square and it has a wonderful out of back prediction power you can see in um at different times whenever we have a bubble the price moves above the power law prediction and uh, when the bubble breaks it comes back down to the power law level and below uh, this is when the market is extremely fearful and uh, it eventually comes back to the power law prediction. A bubble begins, bubble bursts, come back down below. And even though uh, you know it moves a lot, a lot higher and lower, it always comes back to that level. So the way to think about this is that the power law prediction, that black curve, is a, an average. Uh, we can be above that average or below that average depending on how overvalued or how oversold Bitcoin is. All right, so if we, let's go back. If we measure these deviations from, so let me just be clear, this is what I mean by deviation, the distance of the actual price from the model. These are called uh, regression residuals or deviations uh, from the model. If you measure those over time, you see that they go, as I said, up and down, but every cycle they go up 
less. So the peaks get less pronounced. Uh, if you build an oscillator based on this, you'll have the same problem. The higher, uh, the, the top of it, the peak uh, threshold changes all the time. And you can, you'd have to then find a way to normalize this metric in a way that you get a stable range for its its movements. You see the bottom range seems to be okay, except for early uh, in Bitcoin's life. Rest of the time, it has always bounced back from the same level, but the peak changes a lot. So next time in the next site uh, in this cycle, essentially, we don't know how, how high this might go. So then this motivates a lot of people to try to uh, correct for uh, this decay and normalize the in the oscillator. Okay, so um, different approaches have been introduced to fix this decay. But my point here is we can't use a, an arbitrary way because we don't know if that will continue to be valid in the future, right? If you have a historical data, you can always play with it and change it and um, torture it until it fits perfectly a predetermined uh, criteria. And it looks wonderful. It looks great. It's always, it could be uh, always within the uh, a nicely determined range, but you don't know that uh, it will keep being valid in future. So some people have, I've actually heard uh, people trying to measure the distance of any point from the closest point on the curve. Uh, this has no statistical basis. This is just an arbitrary uh, choice. Other people might have, might say, let's measure it, uh, you know, horizontally from the curve, or you know, you might as well measure from this corner, uh, you know, at this corner, uh, whatever. You get the point. Uh, these are all arbitrary choices. They may work at some point. Uh, but we don't have a reliable theoretical foundation for them to keep being uh, valid in the future. Uh, and one, while, while you're at it, if you're going to choose uh, anything that looks good, uh, why not just pick numbers and divide the height in the first cycle by five and then four, three and two, and then you fully correct it and perfectly correct the oscillator. Um, which uh, is clearly not a valid approach. Okay, so I'm going to explain my approach here, uh, which started with um, asking myself, why is Bitcoin uh, moving uh, much higher than the power law prediction earlier and, and much less later? Uh, I think my, my guess is that it's because the market was so thin when it was young and a deeper now when it is uh, uh, grown so much. So essentially, it would take a lot less capital to move the market significantly above the trend, the power law trend in the prior cycles. But as time goes on, this uh, market gets more mature and, and its moves are a lot more subdued. Uh, so I began to chart the volatility of, volatility of Bitcoin over time. You can see that here uh, in cycle one, we went as high as 0.5. These are daily uh, moves. Um, uh, so 0.5 is 50%. Uh, but as uh, we get into cycle two and three and four, you see that daily volatility uh, goes down quite a bit. By the way, this is a wonderful tool, wonderful chart to show people uh, uh, in a quantitative way why Bitcoin's volatility has gone down. Some people seem to be in disagreement whether volatility actually has gone down or up. We can clearly see that it's gone down. So I use a particular measure of volatility, which will explain or, or essentially track how thin or how deep the market is at any point in time. And this is what we came up with. This is a standard deviation of logs of daily price changes. Um, so you can see that in every cycle, it goes up and down. Um, whenever the market is uh, quiet and the 
and there is not a whole lot of uh, emotions in the market volatility goes down uh, but as we get closer to the peak uh, volatility goes higher as well once the bubble breaks people lose hope and trading activity goes down and volatility goes down with it until it comes back up again and down again but you can see a long-term trend here towards lower and lower volatility so um this will be very helpful in um in determining uh the structure of the market it's a it's a single uh, metric that will tell us how the market has evolved over time and we can use this to correct for the extent of deviations from the power law by correction here i specifically mean dividing the raw deviations by the volatility metric that we have here and if we do that we get a we get the volatility adjusted power law index so it is a number that always moves between 20 and negative 20 and actually more accurately uh whenever it goes above 10 we are super close to the peak and below negative 10 marks the absolute bear market bottoms now uh it's relatively stable uh in different cycles it goes up essentially it peaks in the same range and it bottoms in the same range okay this chart shows how accurate it has predicted the prior cycles uh prior tops and bottoms are indicated here uh we have detected pretty much all of the important uh highs and lows uh weekly uh let me let me quickly give you a caveat just because a model fits well on historical data doesn't mean it is valid right so um this is just uh essentially the minimum but there should be a lot of additional tests on it um including cross validation and out of back tests which we have done as well as uh using different models you know in one of the in a few other other tests i've used machine learning which doesn't have an a priori mathematical model behind it we might have introduced the wrong math model ourselves so not having that and just allowing the algorithm to think about it and decide it is another way to check the robustness of your model and uh, uh, as a third uh, approach we used uh, a theoretically driven metric as we discussed volatility of bitcoin which measures the essence and the 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 structure of the market so we have chosen something that has theoretical basis rather than a random uh correction of the index so all these three approaches gives me a lot more confidence that this might be a very helpful tool in the future and that being said anything can happen in future so whatever model you have might be the right way to think about it is probabilistic so whenever the power law uh, the, the vpli which is volatility adjusted power law index uh, is super high you should think of it as the probability of a crash being high rather than a crash is being necessarily imminent so uh, when probability is high doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow or next week but uh, it might uh, very it might happen with a very high likelihood uh, similarly when uh, vpli is very low uh, it's a great indication that uh, the market is oversold and as you would hear from a lot of other analysts oversold doesn't mean it's going to get bought immediately so uh, you should think in terms of probabilities and that's going to serve you a lot better uh, just the last thing i'll mention is even though we, uh, we still haven't put it up on a live uh, on a live page uh, uh some of the crypto media has been uh, beginning to report on this model and uh, uh i'm certainly delighted by that uh and uh we will definitely move on to uh making it more accessible to people but because the metric doesn't necessarily change all the time i i, I post updates uh updates on it every few days on twitter so feel free to follow me for those updates and if you have any questions, reach out to me on Twitter or to my email. 
Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it if you can help me share this video with others. Like, retweet, comments, all appreciate it. And uh, ask any question about this video uh, in the comment section, and I will um, try to answer it. Thank you.